A warm welcome to our service online for Ash Wednesday. And you can follow the service on page 338 of your prayer book. That's page 338 of your prayer book, a service for Ash Wednesday. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Lord, have mercy. Friends, we join together with Christians of all traditions at the beginning of the season of Lent as we prepare for the remembrance of our Lord's passion and death and the celebration of his glorious resurrection. It is a time for personal reflection on our own lives, for sorrowing for our sins and honest repentance, for receiving gladly God's promise of forgiveness and committing ourselves with fresh resolve to follow in his way. As we do this in the coming days, we pray that our faith may be strengthened and devotion deepened. In our observance of the, this time of preparation, we may spend time in prayer and fasting. We may read and meditate on God's word and scriptures. We may discipline ourselves by laying aside familiar comforts in order to focus more clearly on our walk with Christ. We pray now for God's help as we begin our Lenten journey together. Loving God, we come to you not knowing how or what to pray, but bringing in the deepest longing of our hearts, which mere words cannot express. You know our thoughts before they find shape, our speech before it comes on our lips, our intentions before our hands give them form. Search us this day, O God, and test us to remove any wickedness within us and delay our anxious thoughts. Give discernment as we meditate on your word. Give us peace as we receive your forgiveness. Give us joy as we deepen our life in you. And lead us in the way of eternal life. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for Ash Wednesday. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we may be truly sorry for our sins and obtain from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Daniel 6, beginning at verse 10. Despite the edict of the king, Daniel continues to be persistent in prayer, whatever the consequences might be. Although Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he continued to go to his house, which had windows in its upper room open towards Jerusalem and to get down on his knees three times a day to pray to God and praise him, just as he had done previously. The conspirators came and found Daniel praying and seeking mercy before his God. Then they approached the king and said concerning the interdict, O king, did you not sign an interdict that anyone who prays to anyone divine or human within thirty days except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions? The king answered, The thing stands fast, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is psalm number 5, which you'll find on page 596 of your prayer book. Psalm 5 on page 596. Let me say together verses 1 to 3. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen.
Prayer is very much a part of our Christian life. Indeed, in our parishes, the numbers of names on our prayer list and when our churches are open, the numbers of requests for prayers that are hung from our prayer trees in this church are examples of how important prayer is to many in our parish and further afield in our community. The number of views that our weekly midweek prayer time gets on the internet is another indication of how important prayer is to many. But that doesn't mean that our prayer life is easy or simple. It can be a struggle to discipline ourselves at times, to pray as we think we should, with so many distractions in the busy lives that we lead. At our midweek Lenten services this year, I want to take some time to look at some of the great prayers in the Bible, applying them to our lives today, asking ourselves, what can we learn that will help us in our prayer time as we journey with God? as so many have done before us. The scriptures are full of examples of men and women whom God drew to himself and then gave the words and the ministry that he had planned for them. As we read of their lives, hopefully we can learn something of how God wants to work in our lives. There are hundreds of prayers, both personal and public, which are included in the scriptures for our help and instruction. And as we listen to the men and women of the Bible beseeching, praising, asking, repenting, so we can learn about the Holy Spirit, how we are to approach God, what he seeks from us in our relationship with him, and perhaps in some way how prayer works. It's a fact of life nowadays that we're very focused on our own world. We find it difficult to communicate with God, perhaps. We are not sure how to pray, nor do we know how to get close to others. Our minds are filled with our own concerns and problems, the concerns and problems of our families, and we find it difficult to listen, to care, and to pray for others, perhaps. Yet in these days, God is calling more and more of his children to make prayer a priority, to put it at the top of their list of things to do. And as I've said, an example of this is our prayer ministry in our parishes, which we hope to expand on once things return to normal. There may be those who will feel threatened by this. They may feel inadequate and despair that their lack of discipline or lack of faith is holding them back. Hopefully we will all be encouraged to meet God day by day, to learn more how to talk to him, and how to listen to him. Archbishop Stephen Cottrell, Archbishop of York, wrote this about prayer. The hardest thing about prayer is beginning. So just start. Your longing for God and your wanting to pray are the beginning of a relationship that can grow and grow. Tell God that you want to know him and love him and let him make the next move. Find a way of praying that is right for you. Explore different ways of praying. Listen as well as speak. Give thanks as well as make requests. Don't always look for results. Don't give up when it gets hard. Trying to pray is praying. And God is present even in the darkness. So let's make a start. Today let us look at the prayer that we use in all of our services Indeed, perhaps in our own personal prayer time as well. It's the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 5, tells us, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap on empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. 
Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And Luke chapter 11, beginning at verse 1, tells us, He was praying in a certain place, and after he'd finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So in that reading from Luke's Gospel, we read how the disciples gathered around Jesus and said to him, teach us to pray. They wanted instruction, just as John taught his disciples. They had been with Jesus and watched him in his relationship with his Father. They knew that when he spent time with God day after day, it had a powerful effect on his life and on his ministry. And they certainly wanted some of that. But perhaps also there was a sense of wanting very definite instructions. Jesus didn't often give cut and dried answers that people expected or hoped for. Instead he would tell a story or ask a question in return. This time however he did abide. He gave them the form of words that has become known as the Lord's Prayer. From that day to this books have been written and sermons preached exploring the meaning of these words and phrases. This prayer is used in almost every gathering of Christians of every denomination all over the world. And even those who were not regular churchgoers can probably recite it from memory. As a basis for everyday regular prayer, the Lord's Prayer is unsurpassable. In his Gospel, Matthew includes in it, it within the Sermon on the Mount, and he places it alongside other instructions for private prayer. This is the form of words Jesus suggests we use when we go into our room and close the door. He has no problem with beginning such a personal and private prayer with the words, Our Father. Even when we are alone, we are part of the worldwide body of Christ, his church and the world. And Matthew goes on to teach Jesus' teaching on forgiveness. Out of the secret place, his prayer links us with cords of love to others, and shapes our relationship with them. Luke emphasizes it slightly differently. He focuses on Jesus' own prayer life and the disciples' desire to pray as he did. And he follows it with Jesus' teachings about the character of the one to whom we pray. The one who will reward persistence, open doors, and give generously and lovingly. 
and his book Challenging Lifestyle. Mickey Gumbel, the founder of the Alpha Course, describes how he uses the Lord's Prayer as a kind of template for his own private daily prayers. Taking each phrase and filling it out with the particular praises, needs and desires that he wants to bring to the Father day by day. He has found an enormous richness and depth in his regular prayer times because of this. So if you want to develop a regular daily prayer time, then perhaps the Lord's Prayer is a good place to start. Each day using the prayer to honor the holiness of God, to lay before him your needs and the needs of the world, and to acknowledge your dependence on him for provision and protection. Amen. We move into the liturgy of penitence. Let us pray. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. The commandments. Hear these commandments which God has given to his people and take them to heart. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other God but me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. You shall not make for yourself an idol. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You shall not dishonor the name of the Lord your God. You shall worship him with reverence and awe. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy, Christ is risen from the dead. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Lord, have mercy on us and write these, your laws, in our hearts. Honor your father and your mother. Live as servants of God. Honor all people. Love your brothers and sisters. You shall not commit murder. Be reconciled to your brother and sister. Overcome evil with good. You shall not commit adultery. Know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You shall not steal. Be honest in all that you do and care for those in need. You shall not be a false witness. Let everyone speak the truth. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbor. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Love your neighbor as yourself, for love is the fulfilling of the law. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these, your laws, in our hearts. We continue with the litany. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy on us. Save us, good Lord, from all sin and wickedness, from pride and hypocrisy and conceit, from envy, hatred, and malice, and all uncharitableness. Save us, good Lord. From sins of thought, word, and deed, from the lusts of the flesh, from the deceits of the world, and the snares of the devil, save us, good Lord. From fire, storm, and flood, from disease, pestilence, and want, from war and murder, from dying unprepared, save us, good Lord. From all false doctrine, from hardness of heart, from contempt of your word and commandment, and from the evil of schism, save us, good Lord. In times of sorrow and in times of joy, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, save us, good Lord. Save us, Lord Christ, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation. Save us, Lord Christ by your ministry and work and word, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom, save us, Lord Christ. 
by your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, save us, Lord Christ. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, save us, Lord Christ. Savior of the world, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may amend our lives accordingly to your Holy Word, and share with all your people the joys of your eternal kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus, bearer of all our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. God, our Father, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer. Lord Jesus, you heard the cry of blind Bartimaeus and restored his sight. We pray for those whose lives are impaired by handicap, disability and disadvantage. Help us to defeat self-prejudice and bring your compassion to the vulnerable and needy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you heard the last request of the penitent thief as he, you hung on the cross and promised him a place with you in paradise. We pray for all who li whose lives are in confusion and disarray, who feel unloved and unworthy and do not know where to turn. Help us to accept those whom, whom others sideline and reject and reassure them of your unlimited love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you wept with Mary and Martha the death of your friend Lazarus and then restored him to life again. We pray for all who are enduring illness or infirmity, anxiety or depression, loneliness or grief. We think especially today of those in our prayer list and in our prayer trees and those suffering as a result of COVID-19. Help us to be faithful in prayer and constant in care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you often took time out from your work of ministry to spend time with your Father in prayer and meditation. We pray for our times of study and prayer during this Lent. Help us to resist the pressures and distractions of our busy life and give us time to deepen our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, where two or three come together in your name, you are present. Hear and answer these prayers in accordance with your will for your holy name's sake. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, in to, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself and to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. That concludes our service for us Wednesday. The rest of our midweek Lenten services will be broadcast at 7.30 p.m. each Wednesday evening. At 7.30 p.m. each Wednesday evening during Lent. And of course, our Sunday service can, services continue online from 9.30 a.m. this Sunday. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.